What is up, Piper Drivers? Today in the house, I have the brand new Dark Saber by Corbanth. But is this the best and most accurate Dark Saber on the market today? Let's find out. <laughs> this is the way. Welcome back, Hyper Drivers. That is right, my friends. In the house today, I have the Corbanth Dark Saber. My first Corbanth lightsaber ever. So this is gonna be awesome. Really excited to get this out of the box. But before we get to that, if this is your first time on the channel, we talk about Star Wars all the time here on the Hyperdrive, especially Star Wars collecting. And for me, my favorite thing to unbox is the lightsabers. This is the stuff that brings me back to when I was a kid. And I am just, I just love them. I just love these things. So this is cool. Can't wait to get to the unboxing. So if you enjoy Star Wars collecting, Star Wars chats, and all that good stuff like that, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can jump to light speed every week with us right here on the Hyperdrive. As most of you know, if you've been following the channel, I have been hunting a dark saber, particularly the Hasbro dark saber, for a very, very long time. I had that one on order, and they they just canceled my order. It, they will, they're taking extremely long to deliver that, and I don't understand what the deal is. I also don't understand that when I order something from Hasbro, why it's going first to all of the other companies and then Hasbro's not even fulfilling their orders. So that, that really bugs me. But um, from what I've seen online, it's a really awesome looking dark saber. But now I have the Corbanth and that's what led me to get the Corbanth is I was just unable to get the, uh, the Hasbro one. So what we're gonna do with this one here, like I do with all my lightsaber videos, is we're gonna box it. I'm gonna show you the details and the look of the lightsaber so you can see the dark saber up close and personal in all of its glory. We're gonna go over the uh, electronics and the build. It's because this one was custom done by Solo Saber. So I'll show you guys what Jeremy did for me with that. Uh, we're gonna go over the sound effects and the light up features. And I'm gonna show you guys how that works. And my buddy Joseph is gonna be joining me and we're gonna go over a comparison between the Corbanth and the Hasbro Dark Saber. I'm not gonna compare this to the Disney Dark Saber. It's because in my opinion, that really wasn't that accurate at all. Uh, that's why I sold it and, and went along with this one here. Um, so we're just going to compare the look of the two hilts and see which one is more accurate to the show. And then at the end of everything, I'll give you my final thoughts on it and whether or not you should run out and buy it, at least my opinion of if you should run out and buy it. All right, all right. So here we go. The Corbanth box. I really love the way this box looks. It's got a very elegant feel to it and everything. feels like quality. I like that you have the Corbanth in this gold Star Wars looking font, which is nice. So really cool. Corbanth Sabers, Customs, Models, and Props. Really dope. And we're gonna pop it open. There we go. And there it is, the Dark Saber. Very cool. So I sent this off to Solo Sabers after I picked it up at Corbanth for the install so that I can get it done. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. You get a, um, what is this called, a blade plug? I don't know why I had to think about that. It doesn't have any install to it, so this is just to plug up the, the blade for display purposes, so you have that. Uh, you got the key and some screws so that you can take and put that, put the blade in and everything. Jeremy added in the battery, because this one's gonna have a removable battery. And then we have the hilt. This is so dope. Man, this is heavy. <laughs> what else you got in here? Got a uh, couple of stickers. We got the Solo Staver sticker and, uh, and you got a warning. So, all right, let's move that off to the side. But the hilt, wow. This has got a lot of heft to it. Man, that, that, is, that is heavy. Feels real good in the hands. Like the way it feels. Let's get a, a close up look at the hilt. There you go. So you can see that unlike the Disney the emitter is really close in size to the uh, grip, so I like that. You have the open way here for the, uh, for the light, so that this is gonna have lights that light up, so the blade actually goes all the way through, and then this lights up here, so that's cool. Really like the design of the emitter and the lines and everything. That looks neat. And then you got the blade guard. Maybe that's what it's called. Like the design of that as well. Unlike the Disney that I remember seeing, this is matte finish, which I think is more accurate to the TV show. Uh, the other one was more glossy, and I think the other one was almost all black, where this one here has uh, silver grips, which is also more accurate to the TV show. 
So I love the lines on that. There is your switch. You only have one switch on this one. Uh, this switch here is just for uh, looks and peers. Kind of wish it was a two switch system, you know, so that you have your effects and then you have your ignition, but everything's done with one. It's like you got your key right here so that you can pop this off and get to the chassis, which we're gonna look at here in just a second. And then unlike the Hasbro one, this one here comes with the D-ring, so that's cool. So that's very accurate to the show as well. And I like that that was included. All right, so really nice design. It's open here in the back so that the sound can be uh, sent out through the back of the pommel. So really well done. Really like the weight. All right, so let's talk about accuracy to the TV show, right? Because that's why we're spending this much money is that it looks pretty damn close. And it really, really does. Here's a picture from the book of Boba Fett from episode five where you actually see the Mandalorian handing the dark saber over to Paz Vizsla to give to the armorer. And you can see that it's really, really accurate to the, to the show. The emitter itself has that same matted appearance to it. It doesn't have a high gloss to it. Uh, and then it also has these silver grips. So I think that uh, makes it you know, pretty almost on point to what we saw in the show. Um, now, as far as how it looks against the other dark sabers that are out there, I think it hands down beats the Disney parks and I think so does the Hasbro. But how does it compare to the Hasbro dark saber? That's what's really important to me. Uh, because that was another one that, like I said, I was been trying to get and I wasn't able to get. But a good friend of mine does have that, so I'm going to give him a call right now. We're going to call my boy Joseph up. He's going to give us a look at the Dark Saber from Corbanth compared to the Hasbro one side by side. So let's do that. What's up, Joseph? How you doing, man? I'm doing well, George. It's good to see you. Yeah, man. So I just got in the new Dark Saber, the one from uh, Corbanth, right? Yes. I know you got one too. Yes. So um i have been hunting down the hasbro dark saber for like ever and the and i just can't get it it's impossible to find and really what i wanted to do was was compare the core band to the hasbro uh, dark saber so that i can at least get an idea as to what the difference is or or um make me feel better in my heart that this was the way you know <laughs> okay you know well if so i'm i have both of them right here Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over both of them with you. Um, do you want me to tell you what my conclusion is now or after? <laughs> uh, let's go. Let's do that one after. Let's do that one after. Okay. Show me what you got. Okay. Let me see what you... Okay. How are we looking there? Looks real good, man. Okay. All right, so I could see them side by side. Looks like okay. the top one is probably the Corbant and the bottom <laughs> one is your, uh, is your Hasbro. Correct. So, yeah. So the top one here is the Corbant. This is the Hasbro, and as you can see, uh, you can probably already tell there are a couple of major differences. The paint finish uh, on the black areas, at least on the top and the bottom of the hilt on the black series one, is a gloss, high gloss black finish. Yeah, I see that. And the, um, the black in between the stripes here on the handle is kind of a semi-gloss, you know, it has a textured finish. Okay. The gray stripes here are a gunmetal, and when you compare that to the Corbanth one, there's a huge contrast. Yeah, so the black is matte. Um, it's matte all the way through, and the stripes here are silver. There are, uh, there's a huge contrast between the two. Right. Now, if I recall, you mentioned that this one is more accurate to right. what you see on screen. It is. And in fact, be aware that this this isn't painted silver, right? This is actually bare metal, right? And it's brushed aluminum. And then, of course, there's a another difference. You have the D-ring here for the the handle for the um, the belt clip, whereas here there's no ring. Yeah, and but they put the hole there, which is weird. Why? Put, I don't know why yeah. Hasbro wouldn't give you that. It's very strange, right? And then, right. and then the other thing is, is that the the bottom of this has some silver details there which okay. the poor Banth does not have. Right. Um, and then the other thing is the retention screw here for the blade is this silver um, hex screw, whereas you have two smaller black screws here. Right. The, the silver plug, the blade plug is, is um, matte silver, whereas it's a lot larger and chrome, um, you know, mirror chrome finish on the core band. Right. Um, I can tell you the core band one feels a lot better right it's a lot thinner right. uh, it's not as fat 
as the Black Series one. Yeah, I can see uh, that. The Black Series one is in general larger. The the emitter here is kind of it's a little it looks a little stubbier, mm-hmm. and the the handle is a lot thicker to hold. And then of course the the thing that really mars the finish here uh, is this speaker grill that they yeah. decided to put right in the handle, which is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because then when you put your hand on it, it it, uh, it blocks out the sound. Exactly. Right. Now, um, in terms of weight, I would say they're actually pretty comparable because they're both metal. Now, okay. be aware, mine is uninstalled. This one has all the electronics, right? So it's got the battery in there, the rechargeable battery, whereas this one... Um, you know, doesn't have any electronics in it. I didn't get mine installed. So, and and that being said, they're still about the same weight. So I imagine once this one has a battery and electronics in it, it'll probably be just a little heavier, which is amazing since this is actually, you know, thinner. Right. So, and then of course there's the difference in the blades, which I don't know if you can see that here. Um, yeah, the- I. On mine, at least, I, I wasn't really too much of a fan of the Corbanth blade in particular. Right. Well, this blade is um, it, it's thicker mm-hmm. than the Black Series one, and it also has the little um, uh, the little uh, kind of lightning uh, yeah. streaks in it, whereas the Black Series one does not. Um, and because it's it's fatter, mm-hmm. uh, when you get up to the the, the tip here. There's definitely more, more of a pronounced taper at the tip than you have with the other one. Right. Now, it's kind of hard because now this one is very flat, right? So this painted on finish uh, with the little uh, lightning bolts mm-hmm. is, um, I mean, there's it, all it is is paint. Whereas on the Black Series one, you actually have, this is a, there's a raised plastic, plastic area, area. That, is, yeah. that is definitely different. Right. So in terms of if you wanted to repaint it or something like that or do anything to it, you would um, the masking job might be a little easier on this than on this. Right. OK. Um, now, impressions. I got to say, I kind of like the Corbett. I think hands down. I, I think you can stop looking for the Black Series. Yeah, I'm pretty if, much going to. <laughs> if, I had to choose, if I had to choose one of these. I think there's no question the Corbanth one is much nicer. So, man, yeah. thank you, bro. You just made my day. So oh, I'm, I'm yeah, happy well. that uh, that with what I got now, I feel that I feel a lot better. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. No, I'm I'm like I said, I actually since I got this, I didn't have a chance to sit down and put them side by side okay. and take a look. So, uh, I mean, this certainly made the decision for me. If I were going to keep one of these, I would definitely keep the Corbanth one. I'd have to have it installed, but right. yeah, I definitely like that one better. Right. Well, Joseph, thanks for hanging out with me and sharing me, you know, sharing with all of us, you know, the difference between the two sabers. I really appreciate your time, buddy. Thanks. It's my pleasure. All right. Anytime. Man. All right. So this hilt as it stands right here is $475. If you want to get it empty from Corbanth, it's $700 and change. If you want to have it installed by them. Uh, and then the way I did it was I bought it empty and then I sent that off to Solo Savers. And Solo Savers is about 630 roughly for their install, for Jeremy's install. Uh, the advantages to getting a, a custom install from Solo Savers is that one, you get it much, much faster than you will get it from Corbanth. Um, at, as far as I know right now, I don't think anybody has their hilt that, that got it with the installation done. I think the only people that have received their hilts have been the empty hilts. Um, Jeremy also offers expert in- installation. Um, you know, with Corbanth, you don't know who's doing the installs, but with Jeremy, guy does excellent work. Uh, so you you know you can always know that it's going to be done correctly. And then the other thing too is great customer service. You have a one-on-one relationship with Jeremy. He can you can contact him if you have any issues uh, or if you have any questions, and he's always available. So that's the advantages I think, and that's why I went with uh, with Jeremy. I trust him when it comes to doing the install. So. Definitely check him out. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to get to Solo Savers. He also can go over to his uh, YouTube channel. Every build that he does, he always shows uh, the customer how he did the install and how to make it work and everything. So that way, you know, you always have a a visual of what to go with. All right. So let's crack this thing open and check out what the chassis looks like. 
All right, so when you're opening up the chassis on this lightsaber, you're going to come back here and there's a key in the far back and pops open. Actually, I got to take it all the way out. It would help. Um, and that opens up your, your back pommel. The pommel just slides right out. And then inside is the chassis and it just pulls right out like that. So this is an example of uh, Jeremy's work. So you got a 3D printed custom chassis. All right, got your profi board right there. Can't remember what kind of speaker that was, but it's a very awesome speaker. Uh, and what I really like is that you have a, um, your battery holder right here and your battery's removable. So that's really cool. I think that's, that's a pretty awesome feature. So here's your battery and the battery pops in. Make sure I got this lined up correctly. Okay, all right. And, whoa, okay, put that like that. All right, and then you have a kill switch on this side right here. I yield, it's yours. And there it goes. Oh, no. <laughs> I love the sound effects. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. That just seems freaking awesome. Grand Moff, uh, uh, Grand Moff. I always want to say Grand Moff. Moff Gideon has a great laugh. All right. And then you just slide this back into place. Yeah, so. He's a That's the only thing about this one. It's extremely sensitive to movement. So trying to slide this in, it's going to make a lot of noise. Make sure I got that right. Yeah. All right, we'll just fix that once it's in. Apologize about the sound. Apologies. <laughs> All right. And then you just goes right back into place. And your key goes back in. And then that's it. And then you're going to have it ready for the blade to install. All right. And here is the blade that comes with your, your dark saber. Now, when you buy it for $475, you will get the blade, but it doesn't have any of the LEDs put into it. So Jeremy had to do the actual install for the LEDs on that. Um, I will say that I feel like the quality of this, of this blade is, is kind of, kind of crappy. I, I, I didn't like that. If you look at here at the tip, I don't know if I can see that. Let me see. There, you can see right at the tip there, it's bent. You see that? It's got this, this bend right here. You know, this should be a lot more finished in my opinion, especially for $475. So I don't like the way that looks. Um, but anyway, let's get this put inside and I'll show you guys how to do that. So you got the keys right here and we're just going to pop those open and then you can put the blade in, All right? So let's pull these guys out. It only goes in one way. All right. All right. So you put that in and then you just tighten down your screws. Now they do, um, actually I'm gonna swap them out for that, for the uh, actual testing. You have a different set of screws that they offer for the uh, for once you have the blade installed so that when you do any clashing or anything like that the blade is a little more sturdy otherwise you have these smaller pins which are good for the um, for the the uh, blade plug so I had a clip there for that but um, there was a little bit of trouble installing the screws in because the holes on the blade don't line up that well um, but it looks like I got it now. So at least that's, that's all connected, but this is how it looks with the blade installed. So it's got a real nice look in my opinion. All right. All right. So let's get it lit up. I'm going to go into the next room where it's nice and dark and we can see how it lights up and all the sound effects. All right. All right. Time for the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing lights up. Look at that. that looks dope and it's loud. I don't know if y'all are picking up that sound, but it is loud. You got, 
Nice, smooth swing. Very, very bright light. Sounds really, really good. You got some blaster effects. You got clash. Cool. Yeah, that sounds really, really good because the vent is down here. So all the sound is coming out of the bottom of the hilt. So it sounds really good. All right. And then you just press the button to, this is the way. to get audio. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. That's cool. You hold it down and it should go out. And then because uh, of Solo Saver's custom installs, we should have some other stuff here. So let's check it out. This is an N1 Starfighter. All right, let's see what this one sounds like. Oh, it's got like a blue color. <laughs> you got like green blaster deflection. You have earned the mud horn as your signet. All right. One thing I do like is that you can see that all the lights here light up. This one's got kind of like a purple effect to it. I really, really like the smooth swing. Really cool. Now let's see what else we got. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't even know what this is. It's kind of like flames. <laughs> that's dope. Cool. And this one's got kind of like an electricity effect to it. Very, very cool. And, there's, and it just sounds really dope. This is cool. I really like the way the effects are. All right, let me give you my final thoughts. All right, and that's it. So my final thoughts on this Corbanth Dark Saber. This thing is a fantastic, exciting hilt for me to own. I'm really, really happy to actually have this one. I love the weight of it, I love the feel of it. I love that it's almost identical to what we see in the TV show. So at least uh, as far as accuracy goes, I wanna say this is, if not 100%, very, 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 very close, as you can see from the pictures. Um, now that I've seen it against the Hasbro lightsaber, I know for a fact that I made the right choice as far as the look, so I'm happy about that. Uh, Jeremy's work, from Solo Sabers on the install on this is outstanding. I really love the way the lightsaber lights up, the sound effects and everything that it does. I like that the sound comes out of the back of the hilt. So I think this is a very awesome and well worth the money hilt, all right? The blade, not a big fan of at all. I think Corbanth cheaped out on that and they could have done much better, especially for the $475. So is this the lightsaber that I suggest for you guys to buy, the dark saber for you guys to buy? Um, that's up to you really because of the cost. I really don't want to tell you guys run out and go drop 500 bucks on an empty hilt and then go and spend the money that I spent on this. Uh, I think it's well worth the money um, in comparison, especially if you want something that is accurate to what you see on the show. Uh, it's very hard to beat the Hasbro price, right? You know, a little over $200, actually maybe closer to three, like 250 or something like that. Uh, but you get a, a pretty close to accurate uh, dark saber, uh, but nothing is going to top the look and the feel of this, in my opinion. So that's my thoughts on it. I 100% recommend you guys going to check out Corbanth and looking at this Darksaber if you're looking to pick one up. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments below. And until next time, 
May the force be with you.